then right after that, they immediately took him to the hospital. He was in the ICU for several days. They were trying to figure out what was wrong, and they found out there was some inflammation uh, around his spinal cord. But it was a very, very quick turn of events. It's a very active boy. Vakash is playing sports, and this all happened, Anderson. And, and his whole left arm was paralyzed. Parents say he, he's making progress. How has he done that? Yes, his parents believe that they have been really progressive on attacking this from right away. And by doing that, that means a lot of physical therapy. So they are busy. He is constantly working on it. Take a listen. What do you do during those three to four hours? I do uh, about the fine motor skills. I go into the water every day. Um, I work on the floor trying to lift up and down. And... Uh, what do you do in the water? I, since it's, most of the gravity is taken off, I try to get lift, like, from down all the way up and from side, and I go with the physical therapist, like, three times a week, and that's what I do for about an hour. And that is really remarkable because he could not move his arm at all from his shoulder down to his fingertips. His uh, parents saying that it really started in his shoulders, went down to his fingertips, and then it's working its way back, coming back, and getting better. And that's what's giving them hope. Ah, brave little boy. I mean, the, this illness, it's only hit the news the last couple of days, but this family's been dealing with this, what, for more than a year? For, yeah, for more than a year. You're talking about September 2012. And the thing about it is they didn't really get this diagnosis that it was probably this mystery illness until recently because before they thought it was an autoimmune illness, which they now believe it is not. But what they are really concerned about is that the message out in the media for the last couple of days is that there is no hope. And they say they have hope, and that's what's important to them. All right, Stephanie, I appreciate the, uh, the update. Thanks very much. Joining me now is Chief Medical Correspondent Dr. Sanjay Gupta. So you heard this boy describe what happened to him. Are those symptoms common for the kids who seem to have this polio-like illness? Yeah, well, you know, it, it's worth pointing out that, that the, the vast majority of people who get an infection like this don't, don't develop any symptoms at all. They don't, they don't develop any weakness or any of the uh, sort of cold-like symptoms that you just heard described there. But a small percentage do get this sort of weakness, and it usually comes on pretty suddenly. It can be a single limb at a time, or it can be much more, uh, you know, systemic, much more of the whole body. What, what is interesting to see, and, you know, what, what, what Stephanie just mentioned there as well, is that even with polio, there were certain certain groups of people who did get better. They improved over time. And it's been about a year and a half now, I think, since some of these first cases. See how that goes over the next several months, a year or so. See if there's gradual, even continued improvement. So, I mean, so what could this be? Because, I mean, I know at least two of the patients have tested positive for something called an enterovirus 68. That's right. And, and they, so two of the patients who, who got to the hospital pretty early got tested early, did find this enterovirus 68. This is a type, this is a type of virus Polio is caused by a type of virus, and they're in very, they're very similar viruses. They come from a similar family of viruses. Uh, what happens with this type of virus is that it gets into the body, and then in particularly severe cases, it can start to surround the spinal cord and cause the symptoms, again, that you just heard there. Uh, it, again, it's, it's rare. There's not concern that it's spreading from person to person. We've been following this for 18 months. It doesn't seem to be going within families even, so the, the idea that it's contagious just doesn't seem to be there. But it does seem to be some sort of virus. They've only been able to find it in two patients so far, Anderson. And there's no vaccine for this kind of virus. So what kind of treatments are there? No, there, there's not a vaccine. There's a vaccine for polio, right. as, as you know, but not for this particular enterovirus. Uh, if, if it was more common, if, it, if there were more cases, they may develop a vaccine for it. As far as treatments go, you know, unlike a bacterial infection for which you can take an antibiotic, there isn't a specific antiviral for this enterovirus 68. So, so typically what you do is you, you treat patients for the symptoms that they have. So if they've developed you know, the upper respiratory cold-like symptoms, you treat them for that. And then if they develop weakness, you do the physical therapy, as you just heard there, and you can get some pretty good results. It takes time, and sometimes the weakness will come and go, uh, but the physical therapy can help uh, in certain situations. I mean, obviously I don't want to freak out parents. There's, what, 20 or so cases, five confirmed. What's the message for parents on this? What should they watch out for? You know, it's interesting. Part of the reason this 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 cat got back in the news again is because this is going to be presented at a conference. And, and one of the things we're trying to do is, first of all, give a message to doctors and parents that, look, if you've seen something like this in your own community away from California, 
uh, go to the hospital, get, get it checked out, and maybe you'll find this particular virus and be able to start confirming these cases. But I think for other, other parents out there, if, if your child is, ha seems to have weakness that's just unusual, unexpected, one girl that she was, they were describing had weakness of her hand grip, that sort of thing, you need to go get that checked out. That, you wouldn't blow that sort of thing off quick anyways, but certainly not in this case. All right, Sanjay, thanks. Up next, Amanda Knox's ex-boyfriend, co-defendant. question is, has he really started doubting her innocence, or is he just trying to help his own?